Robert Spartan and Elisa Smith from UT to discuss privacy rights in the digital age. Robert Spartan and Elisa Smith from UT to discuss privacy rights in the digital age. While he's setting up, I'm going to let you know that Robert thought he was doing a poster. We wait. We are bringing. We brought. He worked hard on the posters, so that's why we brought it. And that's why he was a couple minutes late because yeah. he was very quickly downloading his charts so that you could actually see them on a screen. So I'm going to take a couple of minutes so we don't waste any time to give you a little intro to his research project. I'm just his professor, so I just started the project and let him run with it. Our project is on expectations of privacy. The United States Supreme Court in Katz versus United States decided in 1967 that our expectations of privacy are decided by utilizing a two-pronged test. The first is subjective, and the second is objective. The subjective component is we have to do something to assert an expectation of privacy. So if I'm, my students love that I use pot as an example in all my classes. But if I'm smoking pot in my living room, and I leave my windows open, and the smell of marijuana is wafting through the air, I have no expectation of privacy. I have not asserted any expectation of privacy because I haven't subjectively created one. Sounds right? The second component is far more complicated. It is the objective standard that says, even if you assert an expectation of privacy, so I'm growing those pot plants in my backyard, and I build a nine-foot fence to shield people from seeing my backyard. Have I asserted a subjective expectation of privacy? Yes. Is it, is, it is, is it one that society is willing to deem as reasonable? The United States Supreme Court said no. The United States Supreme Court said no because a plane flying overhead could see into our backyards and see those plants. And so even though I may have tried to assert an expectation of privacy, I wasn't successful. So what we wanted, there was research that was done uh, by Henry Friedel and a few others that looked at whether there was a correlation, so to speak, between reasonable expectations of privacy that we all hold, we're reasonable people, and what the United States Supreme Court decided was reasonable. I don't know about you, but I don't think the nine justices on the United States Supreme Court are necessarily the most reasonable among us. They're not average people. They're not normal people. And even if they were at one time, they're not anymore. But they utilize their gut. They very rarely, it's one of my pet peeves, they very rarely actually utilize any kind of empirical study or determination when they're deciding what is a reasonable expectation of privacy, or for that matter, whatever a reasonable person would believe. So Henry Fidel looked at this correlation, and he looked at United States Supreme Court decisions that were already decided. What Robert decided to do, and in about a second I'm just going to have him come up and talk without his slides, uh, is to look at decisions that have not yet been made by the United States Supreme Court. In other words, almost try to provide the United States Supreme Court with the information they may need to decide what is a reasonable expectation of privacy in this digital world. Is that a good segue? I think, I think you did fantastic. Excellent. You should have to say that. I agree. you. <laughs> Without further ado, here's the real presenter. Well, she did a fantastic job. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, well, as you very well know, uh, we conducted original research um, evaluating individuals' uh, expectation of privacy. And this is measured within the Fourth Amendment context. In short, uh, the Fourth Amendment measures, uh, or basically protects your privacy interests. Uh, it tells you that you're protected from unreasonable searches and seizures uh, within your person's papers, houses, and effects. And, and the Supreme Court has deemed this the main, there is no term privacy within the U.S. Constitution. The Fourth, the fourth Amendment has been evaluated to, uh, to allow or to provide privacy interests for U.S. citizens. It's not Next arrow. Okay, so a little bit about, uh, I just include the abstract, we're going to move past that. Uh, just basically tells you that we're expanding on uh, CAS v. US and Juan Juan CAS uh, off of Fredella. And the main thing I want you to take out of this is that uh, judges make no attempt to discern actual societal reasonable expectations of privacy. Uh, so that's, there's only been two previous studies conducted uh, based on uh, this research. So it's relatively new, it's a new field. Um, in this research, 
has got to be provided to the courts, uh, hopefully, so that they can uh, use this and, uh, and uh, when the report opinions come out. Some, uh, some hypotheses that we have uh, when we were conducting this research, we evaluated it and we thought that uh, females were going to have a higher uh, privacy interest, therefore exert an a, uh, increased expectation of privacy in all realms of our, uh, our contextual um, scenarios. And comparing individuals, those with an, uh, of, an, of an older age, we're going to be a little bit more uh, privacy oriented, therefore their expectations of privacy were going to be higher. And, and the, the last but not least, um, individuals that have interacted negatively with law enforcement are going to be those who exert a higher expectation of privacy than those who have either never interacted or have interacted positively with law enforcement. Um, these may seem uh, redundant, they may seem like it's kind of uh, common knowledge, uh, but you'd be surprised it's not necessarily common knowledge. Uh, this is just previous research, the, the only two, uh, two studies, we hope to add to that, we hope uh, to push this for publication and, and see if we can uh, be the third uh, research study. What's unique about ours uh, for this one is that we're actually providing the courts to, in a preemptive manner with uh, data. Uh, these two previous studies uh, by Slobok and, and Fidella have all evaluated uh, Supreme Court cases and asked individuals after the fact whether they think this was a reasonable expectation of privacy. So what we're doing is we're providing the court with real expectations of privacy before these cases make it to the Supreme Court. Some descriptive statistics, can we pull up uh, that, that uh, just an example of that real quick. There's a Word document on it. The descriptive, um, go to the next one. Or move, or move up, sorry. Uh, no. Yeah, I mean, it's. Yeah, there we go. So go down with uh, if you can help me out. Thanks. Um, so this is just a little bit of our uh, demographic uh, variables, some statistics on individuals who have participated in the survey, some numbers. Go up, please. Oh, yeah, we're on table four. If you look at this one, this is some of our uh, theoretical independent variables. Um, so like I described here, law enforcement interaction, uh, law enforcement negative positive interaction. Um, now I'll tell you uh, right off the bat that we didn't have any workable data with individuals who had positive or negative uh, law enforcement interaction. Due to the way we constructed the survey, uh, we left it open to words. So some people didn't necessarily tell us whether it was a negative or positive interaction. So we couldn't uh, objectively uh, quantify that data. Go please. And here are some of our privacy constructs. Um, energy, you can stop this one. Uh, informational privacy, the way we evaluate that, so if you look at the far right, these are the cases. Um, there's only one that's that we included that's been about that's been uh, seen before the Supreme Court, and that's uh, US v. Jones. And Jones was a uh, GPS tracking uh, case that involved uh, law enforcement intruding onto that onto that vehicle to uh, attached to GPS tracking device. That was the only one that's been evaluated, but that, that's because that's still um, a very con conflictual um, or conflicting uh, case. Uh, also, so the, as we're measuring data uh, or privacy interests in the digital age, a lot of this has to do with um, informational privacy, communications privacy. We have one territorial privacy, and that involves, uh, like Professor Smith was talking about, uh, uh, U.S. Visorallo, or California Visorallo, and in that case, the, the uh, Airplane was able to fly over a house and look in, the, look in the backyard. Well, this we evaluated within the context of drones. So you guys may have seen in the news, drones, is, uh, it's, a, it's a very upcoming issue uh, in the US and as far as privacy interests. Uh, surprisingly, a lot of indi <coughs> individuals um, didn't see an issue, based on this survey, they didn't see an issue of uh, the usage of drones uh, because they, they believe that they, did, they, you guys or individuals do not have an expectation of privacy in public spaces. Now, when that, um, when that independent variable was, uh, when that scenario was switched to privacy interests um, in your personal domain, as in your backyard, they were, they were significantly more disagreeable. Uh, if you go uh, a little bit, let me slow down there. And so you can just look up here, it just, just keeps going slowly. You'll see all the, uh, the little bit of a descriptive here, who agreed, who disagreed, who was split. In the parentheses to the far right, I want to make a note that uh, those are the ones who are neutral or neither agreed nor disagreed. And I think that has something to say as well. Um, so we can't uh, just disregard the individuals who neither uh, felt strongly or uh, negatively or, or positively against this. So, 
Um, so we have uh, titles and many cell phone data. So this is the individual, you know, the law enforcement's ability to extract this data from your cell phone as it emanates, uh, look like your locational privacy, we evaluate things like that. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. If you don't mind. So those are just a little bit of those, like the descriptives gives you a little bit of um, percentages of who agreed and disagreed.